right? Good afternoon, everybody. How are you all doing today? All good? Enjoying the day? Do you all have a good lunch? That's perfect. My name is Rafael Delio, and today we're going to be talking about an efficient probabilistic data structure called count mean sketch. All right? We're kind of short on time, so I'm going to try to be as objective as possible. And I want to start by asking you all this question, that is, who has heard of Blue Sky or who is on Blue Sky today? Could you raise your hands? Are you all familiar with Blue Sky? Okay, Blue Sky is basically a social network, and I'm going to explain that. That works very similarly to Twitter. Have people, let's say, tweeting there, and have a lot of data. However, by the time that I joined Blue Sky in the last year, they didn't have training topics, all right? And I thought to myself, hmm, maybe I could create my own training topics for Blue Sky. I could listen to everything that was happening in the platform and count all the words and see, well, what are the ones that are mo mo most frequently uh, mentioned, all right? And the simplest way of doing that was actually by parsing each message, splitting the message into words, and basically counting the number of times these words showed up. All right? And this question now is, how many unique words do you think I mentioned in Blue Sky today per minute? Well, approximately 22,000 words in peak hours in English with well, uh, stop words already filtered out. All right? If we're using a sorted set for storing these words and counting them, how, many, uh, how much memory do you think we would use to actually store these 22,000 unique words in a sorted set? Approximately two megabytes, all right? However, I didn't want to store only one minute of data. I wanted to store historical data as well. I wanted to keep track of all of this data per minute, let's say for a day, for a month, so that I could do further analysis or even detect the spikes in usage, all right? And well, that would translate to two megabytes per minute or approximately 120 megabytes per hour. And, even, and, and you keep going and it can get you one terabyte per year by using sorted sets or deterministic data structures as this one. Um, and the thing is, Blue Sky has around 35 million users today. By the time I joined, they had less than 10 million, and it's growing. It's a social network that is growing, and we cannot be sure that the usage is not going to grow as well. We expect it to grow. So this, the number of unique terms that I mentioned per minute can grow as well. So we cannot be sure that, this, that we're going to be using still two megabytes of data per minute in, by the end of the year, for example. But what if we had a data structure that actually operated with fixed size in memory? Okay, and that's how we got you count me sketch here today. Okay, so count me sketch is a probabilistic data structure. And if you take a step back and recap what deterministic data structures are, those are those data structures that we use basically every day. Lists, sets, sorted sets, stacks, and so on. And they're called deterministic data structures because whatever you add to them, you insert into them, you know you can retrieve back later on. So basically, if you add an elementary list, and you iterate through this list later on, you will be able to find this element in there. Or if you add a member to a set, and you check if this member exists in the set later on, you know that it's going to return true for you. All right? And that's not the case with probabilistic data structures. So for example, with count me sketch, which, which is a data structure used for estimating the frequency of, let's say, elements or terms in a data stream, if you ask it, oh, how many times was this element mentioned in the past minute, let's say, it might return to you that it probably has been mentioned, let's say, 50 times. But it cannot be sure that it was 50 times or that it was, let's say, uh, 45 times. It's probably um, 50 times, all right? So it operates with space efficiency, and that's one of the advantages. So basically, once it has been initialized, let's say, with 300 kilobytes, it's going to be 300 kilobytes forever. You can add a million elements to it, you can count a billion elements, it's always going to be the same size. All right? And besides that, it also operates in constant time for inserting and retrieving data from it. So basically, you have um, speed and memory efficiency by trading off accuracy, all right? controlled accuracy. And finally, it's included in Redis Open Source 8 alongside other probabilistic data structures such as Bloom Filters, TopK, uh, T-Digest, Kirkwood filter, and a few others. All right? But the thing is, how it works? How can it actually be uh, use a constant uh, fixed size, even though, regardless of how many items you're counting with that? All right? And to understand that, 
First of all, when you create a count in Sketch and initialize it, you're going, to you're going to give to it a number of columns and a number of rows. All right? So internally, it's going to create a grid for you with the width and depth that you provide to it. So in this case, we're creating that with uh, a grid of 5 by 3, all right? which is always going to be 5 by 3. It's not going to increase within time. So it's going to be fixed size. After that, let's see what happens when you try to increment a term within this uh, CMS. So if you create this command, let's say cms.inkerby, and then the name of the CMS, which is terms, and then the element that you want to count, which is Redis, and the number of times you want to count it, and then you issue this command to Redis, what Redis is going to do is, for each of these rows, it's going to run a different hashing function, but always the same hashing functions, all right? which is going to return a number. So for the first one, it returned two, for example, meaning that we're going to increment the counter on the third column of the first row right here. And for the others, we're going to do the same process here. So for the second one, it returned four, meaning that we're going to increment the counter of the fifth column of the second row. And for the last one, it's going to increment the counter for the second column of the third row. All right. Now let's see what happens when you try to add or count another element using the CMS. So we're going to issue the command again, but this time with the term pets. And Redis is going to basically run the same hashing functions which are, in this case, deterministic, all right? So giving a certain term, they're always going to return the same number. So for example, the first hashing function is always going to return zero for pets, meaning that it's always going to increment the counter of the first column of the first row right here. For the second one, it's always going to be the fourth column of the second row. And for the last one, you can see that it returned one, meaning that we had a hash collision with the term Redis so that we're going to increment the second column of the third row again. It had already been incremented before all right, by Redis, and now it's been incremented by pets. Now let's add another, let's count another term with the CMS, which is going to be cats. All right? Let's see what happens. Redis is going to perform the same uh, hashing functions again, and it's going to increment the counters again. So for the first one, it's going to be in the fourth column. For the second one, we're going to have another hash collision, and it's going to increment the counter of the fifth column of the second row, incrementing that again. So it has been incremented twice. And finally, for the last one, it's going to increment the first uh, column of the third row. And let's add just another element to the CMS. Let's count just another element before we actually try to retrieve data from it. Right? And that term is going to be dogs. So let's run these hashing functions again. For the first one, we had another hash collision. Right? So we incremented that counter again. For the second and the third, we didn't have hash collisions. We're just going to increment the counter for the second column. And for the third one, for the fourth column. All right? Now let's try to retrieve some elements back from the CMS. And we're going to try to start by retrieving dogs back from it. All right? So let's issue a different command now, which is the cms.query, and then the name of the CMS, and the term we want to retrieve, which is dogs. Let's issue this command to Redis. And Redis is going to basically perform the same process, but instead of incrementing the counters, it's actually going to look at what number is stored in this counter. So for the first one, for example, it sees two. For the second one, it's going to see one, and for the last one, it's going to see one as well. And here's why it's called count min sketch, because what Redis is going to do now is it's going to pick the minimum value out of these three, which is one, and then it's going to respond to the client that dogs has probably been counted only once. All right, and let's see why it's probably, because now we're going to try to query Redis back. And what's going to happen is that uh, it's going to look for the first hashing function. It's going to return two. For the second row, it's also going to return two. And for the third row, it's also going to return two. So basically, we know that it had been counted only once. All right? But our CMS is telling us here that it probably has been counted twice. All right? And we can actually control this probability. Okay? So basically, we can determine the error rate by the number of columns and the confidence in this error rate by the number of rows of our CMS, of how we initialize it. Right? So basically, for a sketch of 5 by 3, as we were looking at, we could say that 99.87% of the time, the counter was going to be within 40% of the true value. While for a sketch of 2,000 by 10, for example, we could say that 99.99% of the time, the counter was going to be within 0.1% of the true value. All right? So we're giving up on a little bit of accuracy here, on controlled accuracy, but getting on speed and memory efficiency. So let's look 
at some data that I prepared. I have an application. I'm not going to show you the application itself, but I ran it this morning. And this tool that you're looking at right now is called Redis Insight. It's a graphical user interface for Redis. And you can see that we have two key spaces here. The first one is word bucket CMS, and the second one is word bucket ZSAT, which is sorted set. All right? And I ran this application for a couple of minutes here. And you can see that I have buckets of a minute. So for example, this one ran today at the 12th hour, at the seventh minute of the 12th hour, and so on. And we have analogous buckets for the sorted sets, so we can compare them as well. But what I wanted you to pay attention here is, let me see if I can zoom in. Yeah is actually the size of them, all right? Because for the sorted set, you can see that my sorted sets, they had the first one is actually of four megabytes, and the following ones are of two megabytes. While my CMSs always have 156 kilobytes, basically, on how I initialize that. All right, but now let's look at the data that is stored inside of these two data structures. So I prepared these commands here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for these three different uh, words, what is the value that was counted by the sorted set, and I'm also going to check what was the value that was counted by the count means catch. All right. So the first one, the sorted set, is the actual value, and the sort and the uh, CMS is the probable value. Let me. Oops. Okay. So you can see that for day, for example. Our sorted said that it was counted 40 times, which is actually the truth, but our CMS said that it was counted 50 times. All right? For people, it said that it was counted 63 times, which is the truth, but our CMS said that it was counted 69 times. And for morning, uh, our sorted said that it was counted 37 times, but our CMS said that it was counted 46 times. So for this use case and many others, being good enough, it be, being close as it is, is it still good enough. All right? So if we're counting, let's say, a million elements, and it returns that it was counted a million and 5,000, it doesn't really matter for this and many other use cases. OK, so let's get back so that we can conclude that if I had used a sorted set, I would be using, as I mentioned in the beginning of this talk, around one terabyte of data per year with 22,000 unique uh, words, while with account means catch per year, I would be using 80 gigabytes, or per month, 6.7 gigabytes in comparison of 80, 87 gigabytes uh, from the sorted set, which is basically approximately 12, 000, 12 times uh, smaller with the probabilistic data structure today, because the usage of uh, blue sky can also increase within time, and we don't know if tomorrow uh, the, the data that we're going to look at is, is still going to be two megabytes per minute with the sorted set. That's what I had for you today. But before we actually wrap up, I'd like to invite you all as well to see my talk tomorrow that is going to happen at 9 o'clock in the morning, which, uh, where I'm going to be talking about vector similarity research with Java and Redis. It's not going to be that rushed, I promise, because I'm going to have 50 minutes. Sorry for the rush. Um, but that's basically it. My name is Rafael Delio. I've been working as a developer advocate for the past six months for Redis. And before that, I worked as a software engineer for seven years. I also have a YouTube channel where I talk about Redis and many other stuff. I also talk about Redis on the Redis YouTube channel. And you can find the link to the repository where you can run the code yourself uh, whenever you want, and the slides as well in this QR code. Thank you so much, and have a good day. Stay curious. And we have a booth downstairs, so if you guys want to come up and see also other probabilistic data structures, see how I actually improved these training topics from using only uh, the counting sketch, but also using top case so I could check spikes, for example, in, in training topics, you're also invited to do so. Thank you. <laughs>